Hello, Edge Detective here. This vlog is coming to you live from Tenerife in the Canary Islands. And so I'm out here for a few days and I had a very nice day and a half of weekend after I arrived on Saturday. Take a look. However, the rest of this week is going to largely involve me making an attempt to write up one of my data chapters for the thesis that I'm writing at the moment. I say attempting is probably the operative word as I'm finding any excuse to procrastinate, hence why I'm doing a vlog for you, instead of getting on with the writing that I sorely need to do. To be honest with you, I'm struggling a little bit. And when you are struggling, it's only natural, I think, to reflect perhaps on the, the process so far and to consider what practices you might want to put in place to ensure that you limit the amount of struggling to the smallest possible time. So this one is going to be based around five top tips for keeping sane during the process of doing a PhD. So I'm not going to talk about how to smash your viva a PhD or anything like that because honestly I don't know I haven't even written all of mine yet so it would be um, a bit hypocritical for me to sit here and tell you how to do it however I have learned some strategies and realized a few things on the way that could potentially be useful so I'd like to share those with you tip number one a PhD is an apprenticeship Okay, just like an apprentice, well, not really just like an apprentice carpet fitter or apprentice plumber, because it is quite different in that it's an awful lot more writing, but the principle is the same, okay? It's an apprenticeship. There was, I felt loads of pressure when I first started the PhD to get everything right first time, to be able to hold my own in intellectual conversations with my supervisors or speak up at conferences and know exactly what to say and I didn't feel well equipped to do that. I think if you took it out of the PhD context and took it, say you were a plumber and you were out on the job and you were asked to fix a leaky pipe and because you'd never done it before, you got it slightly wrong, it wouldn't be the end of the world. You wouldn't get sacked. What would happen is you'd learn and you'd probably, through that process of trial and error, get it right the next time. You're allowed to do that. We are allowed to do that with our PhD too. And I think sometimes we forget that. The apprenticeship of the PhD is a journey to being one of those people who can speak straight off the cuff, very you know, succinctly at these academic conferences or, or write those journal articles. We're not expected to produce them straight away. And that's okay, why should we have to? We're here to learn, we're still students, aren't we? So that would be my first point, a PhD is an apprenticeship. The second one, I think, is it can be a bit isolating, okay, to do the PhD. And a lot of the time as an undergraduate, you would have been in classes with loads of, you know, students around who were studying the same thing as you. You don't get that at all with your thesis. Quite often there's a handful of people in the country, maybe even the world, that actually know enough to have a detailed conversation with you about what you're up to. And a lot of the time at university you're spent in an office or in the library, probably surrounded by a vast, vast array of different texts on different bits of research you're looking into. And you don't have much interaction with human beings. So I would say tip number two very much is put some things into place that are gonna look after your well-being and to ensure that you have human interaction. Got to admit, last year there were a couple of times when I realised I didn't speak to another human being for three or four days in a row. And that's not healthy. That's not healthy for anyone. So plan where you're working as well. Perhaps go around to family members to work one day, perhaps be in coffee shops um, and, and try and mix it up and have those regular interactions. OK, if you've got any friends that are around the university or colleagues you can meet up and have a chat with, even if it's completely un-PhD related, then it's really, really worthwhile doing. Tip number three. Don't be afraid to back yourself. One of the most difficult things I found in my first year and a load of other PhD students that I've spoke to have as well is getting that pen to paper in the first place and having the confidence to write 
that first thousand words and backing yourself to put in abstracts for conferences is really really important because that's the only way we're ever going to get better at what we do it can be difficult as well and i know for me having the confidence to do that or worry about that nearly put me off doing it but in a phd again because there's only you around it's you that's got to back yourself you know it can be great other people can have confidence in you but they're not going to be the ones getting up and presenting their work or speaking about their research so don't be afraid to back yourself okay you are good enough to do the phd otherwise you wouldn't have got accepted for it so get out there and start spreading the message about your research tip number four have hobbies and keep them up Without hobbies, I'm pretty sure I would have gone absolutely nuts by now. Like I've got a huge pile of books about wizards and dragons that I read when I want to break from the PhD stuff, and I try and get out and about exercising as much as I possibly can. I'm pretty sure that's what's stopped me from going completely bananas, and it's something that I'd recommend anybody to do. If you can plan it right from the start as well, and have maybe a couple of nights of week down the gym, or um, doing, I don't know, if you're interested in extreme knitting or whatever it might be just keep up with doing it and don't let them drop by the wayside just because you feel like you might be under pressure with the thesis actually giving your brain a break from thesis writing um, and doing something else and being able to spend a few hours relaxing is probably going to set you up far better for when you get back into the swing of things so tip number four would be definitely have hobbies and keep them up during the phd process Tip number five, it's all right to feel completely lost. I feel completely lost today. Um, I'm not completely lost about the same things as I was when I first started the PhD. I feel a lot less lost about those now. But as the PhD is a process, like I said, that apprenticeship, then all it's meant is each time I felt a little less lost with something, then I become a little bit more lost with something else. And that's okay. I think one of the, probably the take home thing um, from my PhD journey so far is accepting that it's okay to feel lost and okay to feel a bit uncomfortable and a little bit unsure as to where this next step um, or how the next step will be taken. It, I'll be honest with you, it doesn't feel great at all. You know, I'd much rather not be lost. That'd be ideal. But also, it's okay. It's part of the process. It's something that's probably not going to go away. You know, as a PhD student or a researcher, you're dealing with really, really complex issues. And you are dealing in questions that don't have any answers quite a lot of the time that other people can tell you. And... You know, part of the process of being a PhD research student is, and a researcher in general actually, is to try and come up with answers to things that other people are feeling completely lost about too. And then hopefully, collectively, at the end of it, we can all feel a little bit less lost. So, I think they're probably my five PhD tips. Just to go back over, tip number one, a PhD is an apprenticeship. So you're not expected to know everything right from the start. It's a process of learning and it's why you've got your supervisors there and it's absolutely fine to make mistakes. The more mistakes you make during the apprenticeship, the less you do when you're fully qualified is the way I look at it. Tip number two, it can be a bit isolating. It probably will be a bit isolating. So get yourself some routine places to, to work in, people to see that can break it up a little bit and make sure you socialise with other humans. That's really important too. Tip number three, don't be afraid to back yourself, okay? Put those abstracts in for those conferences. Talk about your research with the, with the academics because it's your project, okay? You are the only person that's going to be able to do that for you and it's probably really important for your future as well. So the third one, definitely back yourself. You can do it, you are good enough, so go prove it. Number four, have hobbies, okay? Have things that you enjoy doing that are completely unrelated to the PhD. Yeah, and have absolutely nothing to do with it. That's absolutely vital. Um, having a brain break is going to be good for you. It's going to leave you feeling a lot more refreshed and energised than if you don't. And also, it's probably going to lead to you feeling a lot more productive with your work as well. And will give your brain space to digest all of the information that's probably been chucked here over the last day or two days or however long it's been. Tip number five, it's all right to feel completely lost. 
as researchers, I think we're signing ourselves up to, like I said, always feeling a little bit lost and we can be lost together. Okay, I'm not saying you'll ever feel completely comfortable with being or that feeling um, of kind of dislocation, feeling a bit lost in the process, but it's all right and it's what's meant to happen and it's okay if it does. So don't feel like you're doing anything wrong if that's how you're feeling because it's how everybody feels. So I hope those five tips have been helpful. Next time that I speak to you will be probably from a place called Cumberland Lodge, which is a really cool education charity where I'm a scholar. So hopefully I can show you around there a little bit and maybe bump into some interesting people to chat to as well. So thank you for watching and Edu Detective.